Yo, we are live. Yo, what up, world? It's your boy C's from the C's Life.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Fit Pro Development Podcast. Today's guest, I'm super excited about this guest because we haven't spoken in quite some time. She's also a one of the co-founders of the Fit Pro Development League and also um, a, f- a member of our mastermind group. So she's like an author, entrepreneur, coach, all of it, too much to list. So um, looking forward to sharing her perspectives um, with her journey in entrepreneurship and personal development, right? And as a fitness coach. So without any further ado, let's welcome Garrett. Glad to be here. Hey, what's up, girl? <laughs> Very excited that you reached out, Caesar. It's been a long time coming, and you've been on my podcast before. I love it. Uh, yes, yes, we're definitely going to get to that. Um, so, for those, oh, oh, and also a quick note like, I had you on my channel as an interview, right? Yes. And you are till this day my highest viewed interview. No. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, totally. That was um we were doing the uh we were talking about Barry's boot camp. Yes. And yeah, you, you remember that? I yeah, remember still, that. Wow, we yeah, have like a past life together. Yes, <laughs> like there's still like awesome magic happens. So let's see if uh, magic happens today. Um well. So I knew I just, you know, the intro was very, very long, but without um, any more disruptions, let the audience know who you are, where you're currently from, and um, what is it that you do? Awesome. Well, I am now living in New Hampshire, which is so random. I'm from uh, Indianapolis originally, never planned on living anywhere outside of the Midwest, spent six years in Boston. Now I'm here in New Hampshire, recently married and still considering myself a new mom. My son is 16 months old. So navigating entrepreneurship for the last, gosh, 16 months and in you know the 10 months before that has been so interesting. And honestly, having eight years of entrepreneurship prior to motherhood was a blessing because you kind of already know what you're in for. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard no matter what. Um, and so I guess what you could call me right now is a mindset coach, but I haven't really been using that term. I've been using the term more of an intuitive guide because what I've found, uh, intuitive guide for entrepreneurs, because what I've found is um, I've gone much more of a spiritual route with my, my foundation is in fitness, hence why we know each other. But um, I realized that a lot of people coming for me as a coach were coming for a playbook and the best playbook you'll ever have is the one that you create yourself. And so that sort of gave me permission and the people opting into my work a knowing before we even started that I'm going to help guide them to their own answer versus telling them the steps. Like there's so many coaches in the industry that are like, okay, so this is what you do for market and people want to be told what to do. And um, in 2020, I realized, a bunch of people were coming to me after leaving coaching programs. I'm like, well, didn't you just do a coaching program? Shouldn't you know what you're doing? But <laughs> they're like, mm-hmm. well, you told me to do it this way. I'm like, well, then why aren't you doing that? And they're like, because it doesn't work for me. I'm like, aha, we're on to something. So long wind way to say I guide entrepreneurs, usually early stage people with fitness roots or really a lot of functional health practitioners, um, because there's a lot of parallels with the wellness world and, and fitness, obviously. Um, and also some random consulting for um, done real estate businesses, interior design companies, insurance companies. But um, yeah, a lot of just consulting and guidance. And I guess my final thing I'll say about what I do is most people come to me thinking they have a business problem or like a money problem and really, or a relationship problem. And really they just have like a personal problem that they're working out through their business <laughs> or through yeah. life. Mm-hmm. So it's always guiding them inward. Yeah, so fitness is usually that language that gets you in, right? It's 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 with every industry, you know, yes. especially someone who is in the industry solo, whether they're consultant, entrepreneur, they're always seeking, you know, to like clear up this issue, clear up this problem, and it's more of a personal problem than it mm-hmm. is, you know, the business. So yes. usually once they get that cleared up, they're unblocked. They're unblocked and they start to see they're functioning at a higher level. So those who often just start 
you know, like, okay, I'm going to start this business and do this. It's going to be a journey of self-development. Cause oh, yes. <laughs> yep. After <laughs> like I've been through it, I'm going to build this business It's going to be rocking. And then I'm finding myself doing self-development, right? I'm like working on myself often. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh man, it reminds me of a quote, right? It's like, not a business. You are a business, right? So, yeah. um, yeah. So with us, with our history, you know, I, there's still certain parts of your journey that I don't know. So I would love for you to uh, share with me and the audience, like mm -hmm. take us back to when you knew you wanted to be a fitness professional or an entrepreneur at that. Yeah. So I am really blessed to have been able to witness a grandfather who was an entrepreneur. I didn't really know what that meant as a little girl, but I knew the word business. Like it had this, like, like there was this energy around it that was attractive to me. Um, but along the way, so I had some body image issues, like a lot of women and young girls and even young boys have. And I wanted to lose weight for cheerleading. So I started taking step classes as early as like seventh grade. And I realized that the energy that the teacher had was so inspirational. I was like, ah, oh, someday I want to do that. So step class turned into taking kickboxing classes. I actually worked at the Life Cafe and Lifetime Fitness through high school to get the free gym membership. Nice. And I to all the trainers, pick their brains, try to understand their lifestyle. But I still went like the I studied journalism in college, studied writing, studied business. And um, the, the, I couldn't wait to get certified to teach spinning once I got to college. So then in college, I taught like the volleyball team, the women's basketball team, the women's swim team. I would do their conditioning for them before school, whether that was spin class or TRX class. Um, I was early to it. I was like one of the first groups to get TRX certified. And so I'm doing, I'm building this whole fitness, literal like acumen, if you will. But then I graduated and got a job in like marketing, like, or it was like SEO and like uh, Google sales, Google like sales page ads. And it was mm -hmm. totally like not what I should have been doing. But before that job started, I ran around the city of Chicago, putting out resumes to get fitness jobs because I was like, well, that's my, that's my hobby. So I started teaching at, I didn't know what it, what I was walking into. It was super weird, but I walked into a strong first kettlebell gym and they had, <laughs> wow. they had broomsticks <laughs> without the broom on them, you know, for like mobility. And I'm like, why do they have mm -hmm. sticks over there? They had no machines, no equipment except pull up bars and boxes and kettlebells. And TRX. So I knew they had TRX. So I was like, I'm TRX certified. Can I teach my own classes here? Which was very entrepreneurial. And one of the co-founders was like, hey, yeah, but you got to file yourself as an LLC. You got to get personal training insurance. And yeah, sure. Then you can come in. And I was like, what? And they're like, one more thing. You can't touch our kettlebells unless you train under us because they're dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So they mm -hmm. started giving me some free classes to learn strong first style kettlebell training, um, while I would go to their gym Tuesday and Thursday nights and teach TRX classes to like my college friends that had moved to Chicago. Um, so I was building this entrepreneurial part of myself, but didn't believe it was possible. Uh, but I guess it was probably college when I was like, you know what? I want to do this. I want to help people. I want to be that person that people get out of bed for because there was this one South African spin instructor that I used to take her 5 a.m. classes before high school. I was that crazy. Wow. But every time the alarm would go off, I'd be like, well, Sharon's there and Sharon's doing the damn thing. So like, I got to be there. And um, so it just kind of spin, spin, spun off of that into bodybuilding, powerlifting, strong first training, all the things. So, yeah. Yo, that is legendary. That is legendary. Like the first gym you walk into is a strong first gym. I know. Gym. Like how <laughs> I didn't even know I that, was it. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. And that's like, like strong for that community too. You oh, know? Like so cool. when people frown upon that type of like style of coaching and for you, for them to just welcome you like that, that is, well, I, that I is was great. coaching the other gym I got a job at was called shred 415, which is a company. They're amazing. I love Bonnie and Tracy. I was one of their first new hires. Um, but they basically took Barry's boot camps, Barry's boot camps idea and mm -hmm. created it in the Midwest. And those strong first people did not like shred. So oh. you're on something. They were very kind because they were basically like, we want to, we want a converter. Like we don't want her to go to yeah. like, <laughs> so they converted me. But I also had a soft spot for shred. So I ended up doing both. 
There you go. Boom. That's awesome. So like with your long and continuing career, right? Like you have tons of stories, but <laughs> like if you were to go back that time machine during that, that phase of your life, like mm -hmm. what is the advice you would give yourself? I would give my, I would basically put words to what I was doing intuitively to like validate it because anytime we're moving intuitively, our mind wants to come in and, and, um, question it or tell us that following our instincts is wrong. And I was just following instincts like, oh, I love fitness. Oh, I'm going to Google TRX. Oh, there's a gym that has TRX. Oh, it's strong for us. This is weird, but is it cool? Um, and just trusting that because one of the things I see people do is they think, and I'm sure you've seen this, Caesar, like I'm going to get the NASM certification and then I'm going to do this course and then I'm going to have a business. And mm -hmm. one of the things that makes you more magnetic when it comes to being a business person or someone that's going to sell something or teach something is being really good at something. And so for me, yeah. I don't have an awesome certification. My first official cert was the Mad Dog Spinning. And then it was TRX because I thought TRX looked cool. And then it was the um, NSCAPT, which is the National Strength Conditioning Association personal training one, not the CSCS. But mm -hmm. um, I did those just because I liked lifting. I liked strength training. I subscribed to a lot of um, strength and conditioning journals that would post like the most recent research. You know, Brett Contreras had written a bunch in, in um, what's his name? Um, Alan Aragon. I, su I subscribed to his nutrition journal. So um, and then I was interested in precision nutrition. But at the time, these are all household names now. But I'm yeah. talking like 2013 and people were like, yeah. what, is, what is SFG? Like SFG was going to get me nowhere at Barry's boot camp or in the city of Boston, but it got me somewhere with myself. So the advice I would be is just do what you love. Like keep following mm -hmm. those instincts that are instinctive of what you really want to spend your time doing. Because um, I see clients often trying to do something they don't like because they think it's like a means to an end. Mm -hmm. um, that never works. Yeah, they just try to, like, again, try to beat the process or skip steps. There's no skipping steps. <laughs> like, you still no. got to go through it. <laughs> you know, like, that's that's a that's a great point. Like, people often think that, you know, certifications are going to get you closer to X, X Y, Z. At the end of the day, that's it's good. relationships. Like, instead, yeah. if, you, if you were to go to, like, for me... Like it wasn't more so the certifications, it was the relationships, like yeah. the community that those certifications yes. like fostered, right? Like strong first community, um, all these different like uh, specialties, like go mm -hmm. and meet and network with coaches. This is why I'm able to, you know, pick up the phone and, and, and yeah, and text people and like, hey, like share your story on my podcast, yeah. right? It's, it's relationships yeah. that happen over the years. And it's not yeah, something that, it, you know, <clears throat> it helps you help your clients too. Like I still text Mike Urso, like, Hey, are you taking client? Can you help with this thing? Like just having people that you trust to help you with your clients to refer out. And, um, and the certification usually becomes like the thing that just, it just naturally happens, right? Like yep. I'm bringing out these people, I'm doing this thing. Oh, I'm going to get a cert for it. It's not like, mm -hmm you just do the cert because you think it's going to give you power. It's like, do the thing that brings you joy because anyone listening who is an SFG, who's done that training, like you need at least 12 weeks to train because mm -hmm. you have to physically test. And that's yep. no easy. You got to definitely love it. And those, those guys are very, very intense. Um, mm -hmm. But take us to uh, like for, for coaches that, cause you, illustrious career, like author, um, entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, right? Podcaster, um, all of these different things. Like if there was a coach out there that saw you and wanted a career like yours, like what are some things that they should be doing right now? I love this question. Um, besides working on themselves, like we already kind of talked about and having good boundaries and having like self mastery around just like your health and wellness, right? So getting enough sleep, like the basics of just taking care of yourself. Um, creating content was one of the best things I ever did. So I, I don't want to name drop, but like I, I need to give credit where credit's due. And um, when I first moved to Boston, I bumped into Jordan Syatt, who's a big person in the fitness industry. 
And I ended up dating him. And so we were both kind of building, like he helped me launch my business. Initially, when I say help, like it was like motivate, you know, someone in my ear, like, hey, if I'm doing this, so can you, you can be an online trainer, all of that stuff. But one of the things he did and that he encouraged me to do was create content. And for me, uh, I studied writing and journalism, like I mentioned um, in college. I did, I was kind of a nerd and did like high school newspaper. So writing was so easy for me. So I actually wrote three blogs a week for two years. And then I started writing a book. So I took a back where I went to like maybe one blog a week, two blogs a week. I'd share it on Facebook. I'd talk about it on Instagram. This is before stories. So now I'm aging myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. But then I wrote a book, which is like massive amount of content. Um, I actually have it right here. This is my book, Dare to Move. Awesome. There you go. I was using it to prop a camera up. But um, so then after the book, I was like, well, I got to create content. I'm kind of all written out. So I started a podcast and I used to do two to three episodes a week now because I'm a mom and just the way life is. I've only been doing one. But what it does is it helps people see who you really are. I call it spiritual niching where instead of just saying, well, I think, I think I'm going to coach, you know, overweight middle-aged men in their fifties, you just show up as you are. And if overweight middle-aged men in their fifties become your client, the universe will bring them to you if they're supposed to be there. But the mm -hmm. best way for people to find you is for you to have relatable content like you're doing right now with this podcast user that where people can tune into you and your coaching style and your belief style and your personality so that when you get them on the phone, they already feel like they know you. And it yep. takes a lot of vulnerability um, and a lot of consistency. But I think having also just like a, um, it becomes an asset. Like my blogs are my asset. My podcasts, they are assets for you and your mm -hmm. business. Awesome. Yeah, dope. I'm always preaching like uh, start creating content because not only are you going to be teaching something, um, but you're also going to be learning too, because as you do yes. and demonstrate, you know, that it internalizes and it's, it becomes you, becomes a part of you. Right. So I always say like, Hey, <clears throat> the best way to like, in this day and age, especially mm -hmm. since being locked down, I was screaming it before the lockdown. Right. Yeah. And then what happened? <laughs> you yeah. know, everybody was like, Oh, what do I do? Yeah. Would you like to train online? With no yeah. infrastructure. Built no one anything, had no so. clue. We had been yep. doing it for years. People thought yep. I was like crazy, but it's it's so easy and we have so many free tools. And so I guess the only other thing I would add that just because it comes up a lot with my clients is money mindset. Like mm -hmm. being able to charge your worth, to charge enough money to not only like support yourself, but also so that the investment is high enough in, in integrity for the person to actually want to change their life. Like you would be surprised how many people will throw $250 in the trash. So, but they wouldn't throw maybe 3000, right? So if your prices mm -hmm. are higher, then the person is already coming to you with this sense of integrity with their commitment, but you have to create that opportunity for them to even show up that way by charging enough money for it. And that's hard to do if we're not, if you have any worthiness issues or things like that. Yeah, that's, that's definitely that's like that mindset, especially if you're new, it's going to be hard because when you get out of the academy or whatever certification you take, you, you, you start playing these mental tricks. Like, is it really that easy? Is it really that like, is it really that simple? And then you're like, somebody's going to pay me X amount of money, this much money for this, but it's deeper than that. But we'll get into that a little bit further. Um, but with the, the length of your career, like eight, 10, how, how long have you been on this path for now? If you count when I got my, I got certified for spinning in early 2011. So teaching classes in exchange for money would, we can say over a decade ago. Over um, a decade. Yeah, launched my um, Crossroads of Fitness, my coaching business in 2014. Um, and so I'm at not, I'll be at nine years pretty, you know, we're getting close to 2023, which is weird to say, but I'm almost at nine years in just Crossroads of Fitness, which is wild. Um, wild. Yeah. And, that, and that had its own evolution too. Like I went from just fat loss coaching to strength training and fat loss coaching to mindset coaching to business coaching and consulting. So that's, it's had its own, you know, iteration. Yeah. Yeah. With, with that long journey, like over a decade, like what has been the biggest challenges that you had to overcome over the course of that, that time span? 
I think it's understanding that businesses have life cycles and understanding it's okay to change. Like I had a like micro identity crisis is like, well, are pe- what are people going to think of me if I'm not just doing fat loss and strength training? Or um, I made a big decision in early 2020 that if anyone came to me to work on fat loss, uh, they weren't just going to count calories and do like weight loss anymore. They were going to heal their relationship with food and body. And a lot of people were not ready to opt into that. I still created an online program that exists today that involves some one-on-one calls, but, um, and some amazing people have gone through that and healed their relationship with food and body. But I decided it wasn't in my integrity anymore to just do fat loss because the people who I was seeing come through were doing it, not doing the deep mental work and then mm-hmm. were getting the weight back or doing disordered eating habits. And so I wanted to fix that and, and heal that with people. Um, so anyway, just understanding that like there's a lot of people who strike it big right when you start. Like I think mm-hmm. I had a hundred clients in the first six to eight months of my business. I put a free ebook out at like month seven of my business and had like 300 downloads. And like, to me, that was a big deal. And I had a mm-hmm. article go viral on mind, body green. And I didn't take, I took it a little bit for granted. And then I also just assumed it would continually go up. And I didn't realize that like, it's going to be, for those of you who are just listening, I'm like kind of doing like a rocky road with my fingers. Like mm-hmm. there's going to be ups and downs. And I think I took the downs a little too hard and made it about me and made it about my ego or I'm not making enough money. And so there, it's not always perfect. Um, but the challenge was pivoting and I'm an Enneagram seven. I'm, I'm like need freedom and I need to do all the things all the time. So it felt really constricting to say, I'm just a fat loss coach. So when I met you Caesar, I was doing real estate podcasting, had just published my book, was teaching at Barry's bootcamp, still had one corporate personal training, coaching, client and then was, um, running my fat loss coaching business and just knowing that it can all exist, but you just have to be really smart with your energy because I just, I didn't know that it was okay for it all to exist. So it was all, again, it was all the inward stuff. That was my biggest challenge. It was me with me dealing with me. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) no, I totally get it. I always, I'm, whenever I'm like struggling to understand, I always project outwards. I'm like, yeah. Why Why is it like the world's at fault, right? But then I just slow down and I'm like, yo, no, the world's not at fault. There's something going on inside that mm-hmm. is just blocking me. Like yeah. sit, in the, sit in the room and figure it out and then you can come step out again, okay? Yes. Um, but I've, I've definitely been through that same, that same, that same wave, man. Mm. So pivoting, speaking of pivoting, um, what has been your biggest wins, the bi- uh, the biggest successes um, over the course of your career? I think, and my, I almost said fiance, and my husband now would echo this. It's literally just not giving up. It's been the fact that he always reminds me, he goes, you're doing the two hardest things that you could possibly do besides maybe acting, like writing a book and selling it it, by yourself, self-published is really hard to do. And uh, being an entrepreneur is like, they all fail, right? Like the the plight of the entrepreneur is to fail and get up again. And so all the things like I have failed at a retreat like twice and I'm Mm -hmm. hosting a retreat this fall. The last time I tried a retreat, was 2017. We got two signups and that was it. And we had to cancel it. And now I'm Mm -hmm. taking a group out with two other people, which is amazing. Um, out to Ramona, California for like a spiritual wellness and fitness retreat. Uh, and it's going to be amazing, but the wins are literally just not giving up on writing my book to do what I say I'm going to do. Um, and to curiously explore without tying it to, I have to make money doing this. Most of like you talked about everything's relationship. There are things that I've done, especially in real estate that made me no money, but built me amazing relationships and gave me such good experience to be able to help in my consulting business now. So I think I don't really have like a big, I mean, yes, selling a thousand books is great and having articles go viral and having thousands of downloads on my podcasting for four years, not giving up on that. It's really just been about like continuing to do what is so against the grain because 
it's easy and it's lonely or it's hard and it's lonely. So it is. <laughs> I don't have, yeah, I don't have like one big thing for people. I no, just, that that's that's <laughs> great because you were it's it's actually doing it, man. Like if you only lose if you give up. If you just keep yes. on going, because like now I'm like I, I was saying the same thing. Like yo, I failed my way to my dream house, right? Like yes. I failed my way to success. Yes. Like you're going to fail. You're not going to get it the way that you actually want it, you know, or you think that you want it. Because like I was, I I came here kicking and screaming. I'm like, you know, this isn't right. But then I just sat up and I'm like, wow. <laughs> I never had my own room, right? I never had my own room or own office. Like, I have a great yard, like, dream house, right? Yeah. And I'm like, yo, like, although I was kicking and screaming, it wasn't always clean yeah. and, and rosy. I still got here regardless. And it's yeah. from, like, taking those little tiny steps. Yeah. So, yeah, six, like, yeah. failing is, is, is essential. Like, and failure is essential essential. And I think when you were just describing that, I think entrepreneurs have this weird obsession with like being hard on themselves. <laughs> like, yeah. and I, and I don't know if like we create failure to, the, to get to be hard on ourselves to like do better or a failure then creates our like anger with our fail. I don't know, but it's some sort of a cycle that I really do pick up on with entrepreneurs where like we get so we take it to heart so much, which, yeah. make, which makes entrepreneurship yeah. harder. <laughs> but you know, eventually you do develop some level of thick skin, but I don't think any entrepreneur ever has thick enough skin not mm -hmm. to let the failure motivate them to like do that. Yeah, like for me, I'm like, whatever it takes, I'm just going to keep on going, like failing yes. forward at the end of the day. <laughs> Definitely. So what's the, what's the next level for you? What are you working on? Um, where do you go from here? Oh, gosh. So right now... Uh, I have three focuses, I would say. Um, my podcast, because what I just, I did a lot of interviews with people over the years and especially in 2021, like cranking interviews. And I decided, you know what? I'm not going to do a lot of interviews unless it's, I just feel it in my body. Like I need to do this. I'm just going to use it as a coaching tool. And it's been amazing because when a client's having an issue, I'm like, Hey, before we meet next week, I need you to listen to episode number 250 or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. so that is for me, is just like how I serve my clients. It's my content creation. I love it. Um, I just launched a mother queen mastery program, which is a spiritual, um, program for women in business who are having babies and want to activate their mother archetype, their queen archetype, which is the best way to do motherhood. Um, and then I also have been, um, talking with a company that is Boston based. They asked me to step in and lead them. It's called X mantra. And we're pivoting it into a web three mental health space. Um, it's going to be super cool. And basically, I believe everyone needs a team of guides. So for instance, you know, I have a spiritual teacher. I've had a therapist before. Um, I've had other mentors. And people now are waking up to the fact that therapy is essential. Having a coach is essential. Having a mentor is essential. And I want people to be able to find their guides. But on the other hand, I also have a soft spot in my heart for coaches because I coach so many of them and lead gen is one of the hardest things to do. So uh, this product, it's a three-sided exchange in the mental health space in the web three based world uh, mm -hmm. where coaches will go to get leads and find clients and clients will go to find multiple types of coaches. So that's what I've been working on. I don't know where it's going to go. It's one of those things where I've been kind of on and off with it for like nine months and the journey may end next month. I don't know, but that's kind of where my head's been at because I've been interested in web three. I've been interested in DAOs. I've been interested in communities, building things. Um, and I'm just doing a lot of consulting with my one-on-one -on -one clients in the meantime. So that's, that's where awesome. I think our world's headed. I, I'm very curious about web three. Awesome. Yeah, so am I. I'm looking forward to seeing what, what new iterations. I'm definitely going to be a part of whatever new iteration yeah. is going to be because I love creating at the end of the day, yeah. right? And it's like the different platforms that can stretch your creativity. I would love to just build upon. Yeah. But um, for those who are interested in working with you, like seeking you out for a coach or a mentor, what are some ways that they can get in touch? Uh, you can get in touch with my Instagram. It's at Garrett 
and then the letter N for Nicole Wood. So Garrett N Wood. Um, my website's Garrett Nicole Wood, and I don't know my I don't know if I should tell people my my email address. You can email me. I don't care. <laughs> I can send you that info, Caesar. But um, but yeah, Instagram's a super easy way. My podcast is called Dare to Move. My book is called Dare to Move. So Garrett Nicole Wood and Dare to Move, those those keywords will get you access to me. Um, awesome. and I do have I have an the enter I call it the Heal Your Food and Body Relationship course or the I call it energetic weight loss course. And the Mother Queen Mastery courses are on Thinkific. They're self-paced, but you do get phone calls with me. My one-on-one is a pretty high investment four-month program that we meet actually twice a week. So it's like, it's not for the faint of heart. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's kind of what I have going on as far as uh, coaching opportunities. Awesome. So um, I would be sure to link that all in the description so that they can um, get in contact with you. Any parting words for the audience out there that may be watching or listening in? Yeah, I would just say stay curious and like, don't feel like you have to do the cert or work with the coach that like everyone does. Like, Get the most obscure random cert out in the world or go do to a random retreat somewhere and meet people. Just do what you love because that is going to make you more magnetic because you're going to be in a higher vibration, being in a vibration of like love and joy and fun and play. Like it shouldn't feel like work. Like that's the fun part about entrepreneurship is it's hard as F, but it also is fun and it, it shouldn't feel like that awful because you're you have freedom. Yeah, you're actually walking around and meeting people as opposed to just being confined to a cubicle or a desk, you know, just going out, meeting and interacting with people in your industry. People in your industry are not your competition. You know, Mm -hmm. there are assets like the wrong one, right, might be a liability, but meet the people in your industry because they face the same problems that you do. And they want the same solution. And whoever gets the solution spreads the love and spreads the butter, right? So like relationships is key. Get after it. Go to your meetups, your local meetups, support your Mm -hmm. local coaches at their events, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, that's exactly how I was able to build my lifestyle. Just going around, making relationships all over the world, right? So yeah. I remember you coming up to me at the gym at Lynx and just being like, hey, what's up? Like, yeah, that, like I mean, that's the best. Yeah, you you just you never know, right? And look at the awesome things we were able to do. Create yes. a mastermind, create this development league, a podcast, so much, you know, from just one interaction. And who knows where it goes from here, but looking forward to the rest of the book. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching and tuning thank in. Um, yeah, truly appreciate you joining us. Uh, yeah, thank you guys again. Link's going to be down in the show notes. Uh, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and we'll holler on the next one. Peace. <laughs>